Well, here we go. It is uh, Tuesday, December 31st, 2019. The end of the year. Uh, the end of the decade. The end of the second decade of this millennium. Trying to figure out where it all went. <laughs> and, and who was supposed to be watching it and keeping track of it. Um, but that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, today I wanted to talk about two central themes that I think are really important. They've taken on a whole new meaning in my life. I know that. Um, and by sharing them, quite frankly, it's, it's selfish in a way in the respect that it helps me understand it better and not selfish in the respect that by sharing it, um, you hope that somebody else will find some value, some intrinsic value in it. And those two themes are, are resilience and renewal. Um, renewal for the new year uh, and the opportunity to begin again and uh, resilience for the, uh, the opportunity just to uh, transcend adversity, you know, whatever you're confronting, whatever obstacles you have to overcome, whatever challenges you have to meet or exceed. Uh, and a lot of that goes, you know, obviously goes to the heart of my own experience first with the diagnosis of a incurable chronic um, terminal disease and the subsequent bone marrow transplant, stem cell, stem cell bone marrow transplant that followed. Um, and the opportunity for uh, a lifetime of second opportunities of four firsts and, uh, and the idea that we really don't need a new year to commemorate this opportunity to start over again or to celebrate our ability to transcend adversity. Uh, all we really need is the will and the opportunity and the understanding to, to proceed, to muscle our way through it to understand it better, to uh, to remain supple rather than contend against whatever it is uh, that's, that's challenging your life at any given moment. I have, you know, unique experience with that because of what's happened to me. And uh, I think I can speak to it perhaps not as an expert, but certainly as, as somebody that's on that bus. Uh, and has experienced it. I know, I, I know that different people handle things different ways. Uh, and I know that sometimes people don't have the wherewithal or the ability, or the strength or the support necessary to, to overcome whatever it is they're, they're struggling with at that particular moment. I know that I've done well I think so far, considering everything that's gone on, um, it's easy being courageous when everything goes well and you're not being challenged along the way. I mean, the first number of months post transplant uh, were, were relatively easy. I didn't have to contend against anything other than uh, whatever restrictions there were limitations that were placed upon my activities based upon the fact that I had no immune system. That takes on a whole new meaning when you're being challenged with graft versus host disease and you have, you know, open ulcerated sores in your throat, your mouth or in your cheeks or on your tongue and it's difficult to swallow uh, and you have a rash and you have no idea what's going on inside your body. I mean, you can see the things that that are going on outside your body. You can see the rash, you can feel the pain in your throat when you swallow, but you don't know what else is going on and you can't see or feel. And uh, I'd be lying if I told you I didn't think about what that means and, and, uh, and how, you, how you get through that, how you get past it. Uh, and I think that one of the ways that you do it is that you don't contend against it. You don't raise your fist and angrily, you know, look up at the sky and say, why me, you know? Um, what you do is you, you, you do the opposite, frankly. 
is you remain calm and you say, this is happening. What do I need to do to get through it? Center yourself, breathe, and just try and transcend whatever it is that's happening to you at that particular moment. Sounds easier than it is sometimes. You know, when you get hit with Greff versus host disease, when you get hit with um, clots in your legs and bilateral uh, pulmonary embolisms and, and you're told you'll be on blood thinners for the next three to six months, then then the challenge is real. Then, then you've got an obstacle to get through, over, around, past. That's when, uh, that's when strength and, and uh, strength of character, the strength of will come into play. And that's where the support system is really critically important. People around you that are, that are cheering you on. Um, you know, it's interesting, as I write the blogs, Ryan, our son, is writing um, uh, his blogs in ironmadman.com. And, and I really recommend anybody with an opportunity you don't have to be a triathlete to uh, to read or appreciate or understand what Ryan writes about, especially this last few blogs at the end of the year, where he talks about his list for the last decade, uh, because he talks about the same thing, and, and there, there are similarities there. Uh, moving moving through my challenges are not all that dissimilar from. Um, running an Ironman or, or competing in an Ironman where, where you have to get past those obstacles along the way. It just compresses the time um, into 17 hours or less. So I highly recommend that you go there and take a look at what he has to say. He's really quite a good writer. Um, but I think that, that you, you don't need uh, an artificial celebration of a new year, a new week, a new month, a birthday, an anniversary, to celebrate resilience and renewal. Uh, all you, all you really need is the will, the understanding, and the desire uh, to start over again, and then, and then the strength, the courage, the, the fortitude to go ahead and do it. Uh, however, since we do have a new year to celebrate, I would like to say. Uh, Please accept my best wishes, Leslie, and, and my best wish, wishes for a healthy, primary, first, healthy, uh, sweet, prosperous, happy new year uh, with many more to follow. Uh, so until probably until Thursday, we'll see. Stay well and take care.